The premise of Full Auto is not exactly revolutionary. I mean, Mario Kart has been basically doing this for decades at this point, but there's just something about this 2006 release that you need to experience for yourself. So as I mentioned, this was released all the way back in 2006, mere months after the release of the Xbox 360 console itself. And as we've just gone from the original Xbox and PlayStation 2 graphics and gameplay to the launch titles of the 360 and then to Full Auto, this game was way ahead of its time. The graphics, the gameplay, the premise behind it, everything was eye-catching and yet it was met with mixed reviews for some reason. I'm really not sure why because even now you can go back and play this game and have a lot of fun. So the fact that this was released in 2006 where there was almost nothing like this on the market is a little bit baffling. So at its core, Full Auto is a hybrid racing combat game. You're not just racing to the finish line, you're also trying to obliterate everything in your path. Whether that be the enemies that you have racing alongside you or indeed the destructible buildings and environments. You have a wide range of vehicles to choose from and you can equip every vehicle with a set of weapons. These are called presets. Now you have a primary and a secondary weapon in some presets. The primary is on the front and the secondary is on the back and in some cases the secondary can be on the front as well. In my personal experience it's always a good idea to have the secondary weapon mounted to the rear of the vehicle and I'll explain why as we get to the gameplay. With that being said weapons range from machine guns, shotguns, cannons, mines, grenades, you've got rockets in there and of course a smoke screen to blind your opponents. You can also tune the weapons efficiency. Now this does come at a price and I don't mean in-game currency. If you tune the efficiency of your primary weapon for example and you make it stronger you therefore make your secondary that much more weaker. So there is a bit of a trade-off and something worth thinking about. I've been setting some pretty high light targets recently and you've been smashing every single one of them but not this time. 13 likes. Do your worst. And of course if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet and you want to see more of these retrospect reviews why not consider subscribing. The controls are intuitive it makes it very easy to switch between driving and shooting. This game introduces a unique feature or at least it did introduce a unique feature because these days it's in nearly every single racing game. Now in full auto it's called Unwreck. In most games it will be rewind or something of that nature. So throughout the gameplay you'll be destroying vehicles, buildings and basically anything and everything in front of you and this will fill your unwreck meter. That gives you an essentially an allotted amount of time that you can rewind the race. Things happen so fast in full auto sometimes you're going to make a mistake. Now I hate rewind in racing games. For example in F1 they have a rewind system or at least they did in past iterations of the game and I would never use it out of principle because if you make a mistake you should live by that mistake even if it is a video game. But when it comes to full auto it's not just an afterthought this thing is baked into the game and you have to earn the rewind meter yourself but not only that because the action is so fierce and intense and things happen before your eyes can even adjust sometimes you do need that rewind now you can't rewind the entire race of course but a split second where you accidentally take the corner wrong or you can't see what's happening because there's just too much fire in front of you for example and you crash head first into another car or a building or something having that unwreck meter can be vital to not lose in your place and destroying the entire race. There are of course various game modes to choose from. Split screen and online are two that I didn't partake in. I have no idea if the online is still up and running. There is of course career mode and arcade mode. It would be advisable to go into career mode first because that is where you're going to unlock loads of different vehicles and skins and different tracks and weapons and such and then you can go into arcade mode at a later date and try all of them out. Races do generally tend to be the same. There are a few rules and regulations drip fed here or there throughout the career mode just to keep it just that little bit more exciting for example you only have one life etc drifting within gameplay will give you a boost or add to the boost meter so that you can use that almost like nitrous in like need for speed for example and then of course there are wreck points so in full auto it's not just a case of if i come first i've won the race you also have to think about wreck points now wreck points are accrued through essentially destroying things you get more wreck points for destroying enemies and in particular at rivals which are sort of set out before the race begins but there is a three medal system within each race third place doesn't tend to really involve wreck points but second and first will require you to hit a certain number of wreck points as well as finishing in that position in order to achieve it at the end now in terms of the race difficulty it's not a challenging game even really when you put it on the hardest difficulty setting although that does amp up the difficulty quite considerably the hard part of this game really is achieving that gold medal 
while finishing first. Main reason for that of course is most of the wreck points will come from destroying enemies. However, it's so easy to get out in front, you will often find yourself having to slow down, break and wait for your opponents to overtake you, which then means you can destroy them and earn the wreck points. It's kind of counterintuitive in a racing game to have to slow down and allow your opponents to overtake you, but that's kind of how full auto works. If you're not bothered about the gold medal, you just want to win the race, that's fine. You can go out and do that and still have fun by doing it, but don't expect to unlock everything you can unlock, if you get me, without having to slow down and destroy your enemies. You also have an armor gauge in the game, Game, which shows which part of your car is the weakest and you'll know when you've roughly got about one hit left once you have that one hit you'll generally tend to lose a couple of places but thanks to the rubber banding in the game it's not that difficult to catch up now it does make the game sound quite boring but in all honesty there's so much going on there's so much chaos going on it doesn't make the game boring I feel like if they didn't have rubber banding that would make the game very frustrating and something that you wouldn't really want to play that often but you'll find yourself finishing a race and then itching to get back into it again because you just crave that action and that is what this game is about it's just pure chaos and that brings me on to the attacks of course like I mentioned before you have your machine guns and your shotguns and your grenades and such but when I mentioned that it's probably a good idea to put your secondary weapon on the rear of your vehicle that is because of the rubber banding in this game you are likely to be ahead of your opponents more often than you are behind them so having a secondary on the rear of your vehicle will allow you to keep the distance if they do catch you thanks to that rubber banding. In terms of the graphics, to be fair, considering this came out in the very early days of the Xbox 360, it actually boasts impressive graphics. The environments are detailed and of course destructible, which was revolutionary at the time. It adds to the thrill watching buildings collapse, debris flying across the track, the vehicles themselves are well designed and can sustain damage, and that also includes the environment. The roads will show cracking and damage as you race across them, and explosions are going Going off all around you. Of course that doesn't come without its drawbacks because there are some pop-in issues which is absolutely understandable given that this is a 2006 game with so much going on on the screen and of course there are going to be some FPS issues when there is just so much going on that the little Xbox 360 can't handle it. Now I didn't play this on a Series X for example or on Game Pass so I don't know if a more powerful machine can handle that FPS or whether it's just a baked in thing for the game but on my 360 I definitely had some FPS issues and of course there were some lighting issues as well things were glowing a little bit too much here or there but generally speaking you can overlook that kind of stuff tracks can generally feel the same especially when you're in sort of urban areas but that is soon forgotten when things start flying around the place when you start firing your weapons at other vehicles when they start firing at you when there's explosions going off left and right you kind of forget what's going on in terms of the environment it doesn't matter whether it's the same track over and over again with a couple of extra turns or the building is now on the left rather than the right there's so much for you to focus on in actually keeping your car on the track and not wrecking you kind of forget where you're driving anyway so for me personally that wasn't really much of an issue now despite its many strengths full auto does have a few areas where it falls short and take this with a pinch of salt because this game was released in 2006 the ai opponents can be a little bit derpy at sometimes on the lower difficulty settings and in career mode specifically like i mentioned it's it's quite easy to get out in front and stay there as well of course you will need to drop back if you want to accumulate those wreck points but if you just want to win the race it's not that difficult to do so unless of course you are cranking up the difficulty and then it gets maybe a little bit too difficult not really but at the same time it can be frustrating that there's no sort of middle ground between the difficulty settings a lot of the time you will be relying on luck and that will play a bigger and bigger role as the difficulty is cranked now for some the novelty of the game gameplay can wear thin over extended periods of play. For me personally, I didn't really have any of that issue. It was very much unlike Wheelman, for example, where I only really wanted to play it 10 minutes at a time. Full Auto is kind of a, I'll play a couple of hours at a time because it's just so much fun to play through all the destruction in the race. And once you're finished, you can go back and do it again. I'm not one to give ratings out of 10 for these retrospective reviews, but I will say that Full Auto is a criminally underrated title. Having not played the second one for much of any time at all, because it is a PlayStation exclusive for some strange reason, I couldn't actually tell you whether it's worth picking up the sequel or not, but if you have played the sequel, let me know what you think of it in the comments. This game is 
is currently £8 in CEX as of recording, which is a little on the higher side than I thought it would be, to be fair, but I can definitely understand why. This game is somewhat of a hidden gem, despite the fact that a lot of people will know about it. If you haven't played it yet, I would urge you to give it a go if you're collecting for the 360, and if you have played it, let me know what you think of it in the comments. If you've ever wondered what Dominic Toretta would be like if he pretended to be Brian from Fast and Furious, click the screen now. And until the next time, goodbye.